Welcome to the 12th edition of the Who Has More <laughs> Fun Than Us World Tour. I know they're all excited and 7 o'clock can't come soon enough. I'm just really excited to get that opportunity and, you know, prove myself out there against the top lines. Can they improve? And a lot of that will depend on what we're going to see tonight. I think everyone's really excited. I mean, we have a lot of young guys. A few guys are playing their first game. The game is on. The season begins. Picked off Marshan. Pasternak scores! Uh, the blast tempted by Pasternak. Backus scores! A couple beautiful plays by my line mates. Pass Backus to Pasternak all the way in. Rebound. Marshan scores! For all the self-pass inside, he scores! You know, we really wanted to win, especially a couple guys injured. We wanted to all step up. Pasternak skates for glory, and the Bruins are going to come out of Columbus with a 6-3 win. Put the two points in the bank, and uh, you know, we got to open in Toronto. Uh, we need a, a better effort than tonight to beat those guys uh, and get to 2-0 on Saturday. Presented by Berkshire Bank, the official bank of Nesson's Boston Bruins coverage. It comes your way live from Air Canada Center. I almost said Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, Ontario, where, yeah, they're remembering the days of the old gardens because they are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the Leafs. And hello again, everybody. High above the ice alongside Andy Brickley with Sarah Davis at ice level. I'm Jack Edwards. Well, Brick, already in this season, we have seen a remarkable thing from this team that wasn't always there the last couple of years. We have seen resilience, and we have seen living in the moment. Because as nice as that victory was in Columbus, nobody's been talking about it <laughs> since then. They flipped the switch, and it's on to Toronto, and it's the business at hand against a very ambitious and skilled Toronto team. And that has to be the approach, and you knew coming into Toronto with all the pomp and circumstance surrounding their centennial season and the celebration of all the great players tonight that the focus did have to be there. And you got to really like David Backus and his comments, and I'm, I'm sure he's the guy that's the driving force to make sure that that's where the focus is. Yeah, you know, some guys come into a room and they say, I'm going to provide leadership. And that doesn't necessarily <laughs> rub guys the right way, and other guys don't talk about leadership. They just go out and lead, and Backus clearly is that kind of player. But we saw that that thing that, that maybe for me is, is the most wonderful thing about hockey that no other sport has quite this way, where one team sets the bar and the other team, mm -hmm. led by a nucleus of players, says, you know what, not tonight. And it's going to be our night and not yours. And we saw that from Backus, from Marshan, and from Pasternak, yeah. and the rest follow. Yeah, clearly that line was the difference in the hockey game and the fact that the team really would not quit and they wouldn't get down when mistakes were made and gift goals were given. But this threesome was just absolutely phenomenal. They each had a pair of goals in the hockey game. Marshan leading the way with the five points. I mean, they had, uh, what, 18 of their 37 shots just from these three guys alone. The plus 16 aggregate. I mean, it was just phenomenal what they were able to do. And it really changed when Brad Marshan elevated his game and he got involved in the offensive zone. And there are a number of things he did so well. The first thing he's going to do is read the play on the forecheck. I mean, the puck is all overload with all the players on one side. He pretends to go in and take the body, and instead he gets in the passing lane. Good hand eye coordination to knock that puck down, and all of a sudden, I mean, there are seams all over the offensive zone, and Pasenak finds it. And David Pasenak, what a difference already. Just in one game, you can see what a difference. You know, a little bit of uh, more strength, a little bit more commitment, a little more understanding. He's able to force the turnover. And you love Marshan with a great explosive first, second stride to get separation. Love a little move by Charity, get open on the second attempt to get him the puck. But David back is reading the play. He saw where Marshan was, he saw where Pasternak was, and he got into the seam, and he was able to bang in the rebound. And again, we talk about the motion in the offensive zone. Well, how about in the defensive zone? That's where a lot of your offense can come from. And even though the play up the wall doesn't work to Marshan, he stays with it and wins another battle. 
and then the sprint up the ice. He's able to beat Savard to get to the rebound after the perfect, this perfect pass from back is to Masanai, led to the breakaway. And again, defensive coverage, good read by Carlo, good move to come across to shorten the passing lane by Martian. And now it's just one on one. And what immense talent this kid has, just coming more and more confident. And that little change of pace, step inside move, Jack, and I'm telling you, no better time to shoot the puck when the goaltender has to be moving laterally because there's a lot more holes. Wow, was that line good? Well, yeah, the Bruins sort of did have a one-line attack, and uh, Toronto against Ottawa sort of had a one-man attack. When, <laughs> when Austin Matthews was 16 and a half years old, the number one draft nerd in all of Canada said, his draft year, it's not even a mystery. He's going to go number one. And people were saying, who is this guy, Austin Matthews? Well, now we know a little. Well, I'll tell you, the, the message from the top of the pyramid here in Toronto was really to the fan base, can you please be patient because they want it now. And, and the message has been heard by the fan base. But when you see a guy like Austin Matthews and what he did in his debut in the National Hockey League, Jack, watch this kid play. He's got hockey IQ, like uh, he's been in this league for 15 years. He knows when to slow down to create a passing lane. He knows where to stop in the offensive zone. He steals the puck on a back check. He beats people one-on-one. -on -one. He almost looks like he's gliding at times, but that's the right play. There is a time to slow it down. There's a time to accelerate to the net. He did it four times and buried four goals. And even though they didn't get what they wanted was the two points, they got an unbelievable performance from a guy that's really gonna be an exciting player to watch in this league. Yeah, he's not timid either. He undressed <laughs> Eric Carlson, the former Norris Trophy winner, twice in the first period, one of, on his very first NHL goal. Be patient? <laughs> I don't think so. The Bruins and the Leafs, we're back in a flash. Available all day for a limited time. Pasternak confronts him and forces the pass to be offline. Carlo quickly to Marshan. Marshan gathers steam against Nudibar. Oh, the self pass inside. He scores! Brad Marshan! What an amazing effort tonight! And the Bruins lead by two! Oh, that little lift self pass! Welcome back to our Nesson Studios. Dale Arnold along with Billy Jaffe. We'll get you to the Air Canada Centre in plenty of time for face-off in just a few minutes. You saw that nifty goal, Billy, from uh, Brad Marchand on Thursday in the opener. One of five points that he had in that game. Jack Edwards had an opportunity to sit down and speak with Marchand one-on-one. -on -one. Brad Marchand had a career year. In front, Marchand scores! Exactly what you were looking for. You've been a goal scorer for a long time. But the number of goals you scored last year creates different expectations. Does it create different expectations within you? It does, I think, a bit. Um, one thing that Claude has always uh, talked to me about is, is not uh, focusing so much on that aspect of the game, but being more like Bergy, an overall player, full 200-foot player. And, and uh, you see all the top teams, every player on the team plays like that. And, and if you win a championship, you need to play like that. You know, if, if I don't hit that number and I'm playing um, a full game, a good game that the coach and the management is happy with, then, then that's all right. It's more about being a, a player that the team wants and instead of hitting uh, a certain personal goal. Borowiecki and Marsha tangled up. Borowiecki unable to get up. Something changed in you as a player after the Borowiecki suspension. You said something along the lines of, I, you know, I realized that that hurt the team. How hard was it to make that change, to look yourself in the mirror and, and, and really change as a player? I think I've been working on it um, for a while now. It's not something that's going to happen overnight, but uh, it, it's something that I, I have been trying to change. It's been hindering uh, you know, my game a bit and, and the team's um, game at times, and, and it's a change that kind of needed to be made. And, um, I still, I'm not going to be perfect, but um, you know, I, I want to be more of a player for this team, be a better uh, overall player for the team, and, and uh, instead of some of the antics. And, um, you know, it's it was, it's not always an easy thing, and especially watching that, especially watching uh, that outdoor game last year, is a, is a, a tough moment. So, um, you know, I think that that's a time where, I think anyone would realize that uh, you know you, you have to clean up your act a bit. Brad Marchand hits the 30 goal threshold for the first time in his career. How validating was it for you, not only to be named to Team Canada for the World Cup, 
but to be one of the people who decided that thing. Yeah, that was an incredible um, accomplishment. It's one I take a tremendous amount of pride in honoring. Uh, the whole year last year, that was on my mind, and, and it's something that I, I worked for. And um, you know, when you have the opportunity to be on a team like that, it just you know, it's something you can't uh, can't say enough good things about. I mean, the people, the organization, everything is is incredible, and it uh, you know it's not an opportunity that happens often. So you know, that, that's uh, everything about that tournament. Is something I'll remember the rest of my life. Well, the old saying is, don't tell me, show me. And Brad Marchand is trying to show people that he's a different guy now. Yeah, he has. And he's, he's done some really good things. I mean, the way that he plays the game is the way that, you know, it's kind of a mix of new age with a little bit, and I'm not going to go old school as in 20 years ago old school, but 10 years ago or so when the game was still morphing from bigger, tougher, grittier, slower to where it is right now he can play at Mach 5 speed Dale but he also he can dazzle you with his hands he'll still be physical and I said this earlier in our show too he, he, he figured out how to use his size or lack thereof to his advantage by getting on the inside and then he has built up his body in particular his leg and core strength to a point where he's almost impossible to knock off the puck. And then you throw in these lightning quick hands where he'll skate through or ha stick handle through uh, opponents. He's put himself into a position with confidence, Dale, to now be a regular. I, I don't see any reasons why he's not a regular 30 to 40 goal scorer every year. Well, let's talk young defensemen. You know that there are going to be growing pains. You know that they're going to make mistakes. Early on in Thursday night's game, we saw some mistakes from those young defensemen. Yeah, they weren't egregious, but they were, okay, just a little bit holding on to the puck a little too long there. Carlo takes the hit to make the play. He'll, he'll move that a little bit quicker. One time, Robbie O'Gara brought the puck to the middle of the ice here where they just weren't supporting each other. This time, they give up the line, but they were backing in a little too much. Here's the play by O'Gara. It makes a real nice play, and then he just kind of puts it into a, an area where he doesn't want to. But then some good plays, too, Dale, as they come in. Look at the stick work right there by O'Gara, working the wall. Push, uh, punching it up, pushing it up the wall right there. That's a confident, subtle little play right here. Again, backing up a bit, but then blocking the shot there by Carlo. And then right there, getting up and go. He's going to support the play immediately. And big guy, big skates, but really good big strides. He can get into the play. Another example, covering the middle of the ice, Danton Heinen gets involved. Overall, the defenseman, I thought, did a nice job especially young guys in their debut i'll be curious to see how the emotions will be handled tonight because uh, it's a big night in toronto a huge for, event for both the young bruins players and the young maple leaf players let's not forget that it's a big night for them too as they come home and make their nhl home debut wearing a leaf uniform austin matthews has dazzled us already but now we get an opportunity to see him playing against the Bruins. That'll be the uh, the task tonight. Let's catch up to the Air Canada Centre, both national anthems tonight, Jack Edwards and Andy Brickley rise? as well. Remove your hats and join 15-year-old Martina Ortiz Luis in the singing of the national anthems. Oh, say can you What so proudly we hailed at the twilight last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. Oh, Oh, say does that star 
seat in this building there are 18,800 of them and they always sell standing room beyond that tonight's starting goaltenders Anton Hudobin gets his first start in his second term with the Boston Bruins he had nifty numbers as a backup in 2012 and 2013 of course 13 was the 48 game season abbreviated by the owners lockout it didn't start until the middle of January Frederick Anderson loves facing the Boston Bruins. However, this is the first time he's faced them without Anaheim's defensive club. So those numbers may modulate just a little bit. But 4-0-0, uh, 148 goals against average. Can't hate that. Mike Babcock, one of the most successful coaches in the history of the game. He has won everything there is to win. Claude Julian. A good friend of Babcock and on his staff at a couple of Olympics and the World Cup. The game is on. To no one's surprise, it's the Bacchus line starting for the Bruins. The Nazem Kadri line will start for Mike Babcock, Maple Leafs. Frick, what do you expect? Well, if you're Boston, you really want to try to take this crowd out of it as best you can, which means simple hockey, high percentage hockey, and really make Toronto have to turn, go retreat pucks, and try to make plays to generate offense. And uh, if there is a weakness of Toronto, and they have several weaknesses, I really believe it's on long the blue line. This is where the Leafs want the puck to get it in deep. Leo Komarov with the hit on Chara. Brandon Carlo getting away from the stick work of Cadbury up ahead to Pasternak tries to saucer the pass through. Komarov picks it off. Go Leafs go the chant from the Air Canada center crowd. Pasternak second effort gets it ahead to Marsh and twists around Morgan Riley. Pasternak penetrates turns wheels it on Anderson handcuffed him a little bit but he rakes it back. Pasternak as you mentioned Rick eight or ten pounds of Good muscle, he's getting man strong, and that goes along with tremendous skill. He has such a love for the game, and, and you know when you're a first-round kid and you know you have uh, the skills that it takes to play at a high level, you know, what's keeping me from being a consistent performer? And you look to the veteran guys, he's playing alongside Bacchus and Marchand right now. He had a chance to play along with Bergeron, and Bergeron was healthy, and, and you start to understand really how the game's played. You get better habits. And, and once you combine those things with skill, Danton Heinen just wide. Here's David Krejci, but he can't keep the puck in front of him. And have success, you know, good things come. James Van Reemsdyke with a hummer from the left wing. And if you're saying, what's Reemsdyke doing wearing number 25? They retired 13 numbers forever. They had been reusing the honored numbers, but the Leafs announced before this 100th anniversary game tonight. And whose number did he have? Boy, you got me. It's got to be Salman, right? Well, that would make sense. <laughs> Gloria Salman, who said that Toronto is the mecca of hockey. 
It always has been and it still is. Dominic Moore fires short side on Anderson. Riley Nash bumps into Connor Carrick. And there's Austin Matthews taking a pounding from Noel Achari. Zach Hyman works it all the way to the end board, spins with Brandon Carlo. Nash gets a stick in and takes the puck away. Ahead to Achari, who takes a bump from Gardner. And there will be no icing here. The Bruins will change out. And Toronto also gets fresh legs. Jake Gardner hard around into the zone. On the far side, Connor Brown gets mashed into the boards. Peter Holland keeps the puck alive, tries to scoop past Jimmy Hayes. Zeit says shot to flex off a stick. And up out of play, the faceoff will be in the Boston zone. Well, Colin Miller's in coverage with Matt Martin. He's in pretty good position. He's trying to box him out and push him out of that slot area. Got to get his stick, too. Martin got a piece of that drive from the right point. Unfortunately for Boston, that puck was up over the crossbar and over the glass. About 21 minutes of ice time for Colin Miller two nights ago in Columbus. And it's a little eyebrow raising. Hunwick driving it into the pile. It's underneath. And Brown scores. The Bruins are looking around for the puck. Kudoman couldn't get to it. And Brown punches it into the top corner. Well, Zarnik's taking the draw for Boston. Uh, did not have a strong game in the faceoff circle in game one in Columbus. And Toronto's just going to flat out win this draw clean. And when that puck goes back to the left point, Jimmy Hayes right side of your screen. He's going to try to get out on the shooting lane. But this puck gets by Hayes, and it goes into the pile of players, and nobody can find it. And now Bolesky's on the wrong side. He tried to box out Brown, out by the tops of the circle. But Brown attacked the net, got inside position. Nazem Kadri and David Backus. Backus over the top. Kadri misses to the left. Backus tags him twice. A good comeback from Kadri. They're wild. Backus regains his skates. Backus trying to hammer away. Kadri escaping the punches. Hard blows landed in each direction. And obviously a history between these two. Backus is known for going after top talent. Getting right in people's faces, right in their grill, right in their kitchen. But there's a history here because it was pretty obvious. They fought last season. Away. Matthews feeds it through Morgan Riley, but there's Pasternak in the back check. Marshan saw it coming from Mitch Marner. High sticking is the call. It's going to be on Marshan when he tried that little inside move, and uh, the body contact was coming. The stick got up a little high, and the referee felt that was worthy of a high stick. Might have been self-defense. Well, we're going to look at uh, Austin Matthews tonight. Excited to see this young man play coming off that impressive four goal performance in the opener. Charles with the long reach, the good stick position. Got him to the outside. There's the high stick by Martian. Pulled that puck out of some problems. Trying to get something going offensively. I think the, the hit actually surprised him a little bit. That's the reason to stick it up. Power play for Toronto. The power play stats. I brought you by Echo Store Technologies, your data center solutions provider. Toronto was 0 for 4 with a man advantage Thursday in a 5-4 overtime loss in Ottawa. But Dominic Moore here to win draws in the defensive zone. Does just that. So Marchan, who figures largely in Boston's penalty kills, is in the box. Along with Bacchus, who also is used for that. 
Which Marner wheels. Dominic Moore reads it well. Moore had an especially strong third period. Every time he got the puck, things were safe for Boston. Made a lot of smart plays. Tyler Bozak down in the left wing corner. Holland after the puck, it bounces up. And Matt Poleski is there to fire it down the ice. Bruins really competing for the puck on the penalty kill. Well, it's a critical PK. You don't want to be down two. They got down to the other end against Columbus, but that's not a winning formula. Komarov drops it off. Austin Matthews, the tackle, finds his seam, tosses it through. Put over a couple of saves. William Nylander just coming toward goal. <laughs> yeah, Matthews, my goodness. Well, Matthews has the benefit right here, obviously, with the extra player on the ice. You would like to stand up at that blue line if you can, but if there's people open, you got to back off. you got to give up your own blue line. you got to not allow Matthews to get all the way to the net or into a scoring position. But he had that advantage with some speed. But his obvious uh, puck carrying skills, evident. He does sight sev off to Matthews across the slot. Nylander picks it up on the bounce off the kick plate. Zaitsev fires it through. Matthews chops it right through the crease. Nylander around the board. Matthews, the head fake. Zaitsev into the right circle. Nylander shot off a of Lyles' leg. Nylander, who's Michael's son, doesn't get much on the pass, and Krejci works it out to center. Less than 30 seconds to go on the power of play as Leo Komarov, the Estonian, brings it over the line. Nylander couldn't stick handle cleanly as Riley Nash got the stick in. Yeah, it's only about 15 seconds left on the power play. This has been a strong penalty kill by Boston. They've had good layers, and they've been able to almost double team the Leafs, even though they're short of guy. Matt Martin around past Peter Holland. One shot on goal during the power play. Marshall is off the box. Nash almost sprang it. No icing here. Anderson flips it past Marshan. Martin, the ex Islander. Cross ice, but it's a turnover. Marshan pursues against Matt Hunwick. Hunwick tries to staple Marshan in. And here comes Holland over the Boston line. Holland cranks it off. A juicy rebound off Rudovan. Sarnik comes away with the puck, and on possession, we get a roughing call. Yeah, it happened way back, Jack, in the offensive zone for Boston when Matt Hunwick was playing the body on Marshan. Marshan didn't like the way he was hit from behind, up near the head, low along the boards. And the two of them had an exchange, and Marshan got him up in a headlock right in front of the official. Take a look at this move by Marshan. He didn't like that little shove, and then the little cross check to the back of the head, so he responds in kind. And that extra hang on to the back of the head when he's trying to get away from Hunwick, enough for the officials to make another call. The Marshians think it if, if you're gonna make a call there, call them, call us both. Not gonna get the benefit. So right back on the power play goes the lead. Big partner, Tyler Bozak, Van Riemsdyk on the doorstep almost tipped at home, just wide of the pulse. Allen picks it up and swoops around. Gardner picks it up on the weave. Gardner trying to swim around Lyles. O'Gara takes the poke at the puck. Bozak slides it all the way back to Marner. Mitch Marner, a dynamic player. He's on the right side now. With the puck, Marner through the seam. Bozak can't get the shot cleanly through Lyles. And O'Gara drives it off the board. And the Bruins are being tested already here. You know, you're just about uh, six, seven minutes into this hockey game. Back-to-back -back power plays for Toronto. And two of your better penalty killers sitting in the penalty box right now. Take Gardner right over the center dot. Gives it on to the right side. Gardner, the defenseman, all the way forward to the goal line. David Krejci bumps Matthews, who wheels it off to Chara. It bounces off the dasher and drops down right onto his forehand. Through the seam, Spooner gains the line. The back foot snapshot. Anderson knocks the puck down. Zaitsev on the turn. Komarov flies one cross corner. Milan McCulloch. 
Trying to nudge it middle, but Carl is there. The Bruins showing good layers. Less than 30 seconds to go on the penalty kill. Molesky going middle. But Carlo couldn't quite connect with him as the rookie carried forward. Achari breaks up the pass at the red line and tosses it in. Perhaps time for one more rush for Toronto with the man advantage. Marincin steps out. Bozak flies up the right wing towards Krug. And the Bruins make the blue line count. Uh, well executed penalty kill back to back by Boston. We mentioned the layers. I mean, that was a great example. Bolesky with a back check all the way below the goal line. Chara comes over. They make it a two on two. They win the good, strong battle, the physical battle. And who ends up with that loose puck? Carlo. He comes all the way over. They outnumber the Leafs. And then they get a little something going through the neutral zone. They almost nearly connect with Bolesky on the net drive. Bruins need to use these back to back strong penalty kills to get themselves a little momentum in this hockey game. Back is in Pasternak, and the third part of that line about to emerge from the box. Marchand is out. Cadbury tries to fire it toward goal, deflects off Colin Miller's stick up and out of play. 1-0, the Maple Leafs ahead in the early going at Air Canada Center. America. And three assists in the season opener. Became the 32nd Bruin to record at least two goals and three assists in a game. And of course, as every school child knows, Frick did it in October of 1991. 6-5 loss in St. Louis. So you must share something in, Connor, uh, in, in common with uh, Austin Matthews. No. Part of every single goal for your team. Still came up one goal short. There's a guy named Brett Hull that had something to do with that. Yeah. He was good. Krug, the backhand tap to O'Gara. Backus laterally. Krug plays it on a bounce, and Cabri finishes his check with a forearm shiver right under the chin. Marshan flips the puck off the wall, picks it up himself, puts the hit hip on Riley. Cabri gets his body between Pasternak and the puck. McCulloch from the penalty bench. All the way around through the corner. The Leafs change out. Bruins will get fresh legs on the ice as well. Ryan Spooner on the diagonal carry. Finds Heinen through the seam. Krejci nearby. The indirect pass. Colin Miller looking for Spooner with a slap pass. But a Leaf got a stick on it. Anderson makes the save on Spooner. Marked quickly out to center ice. Miller engages body to body. And Spooner is there on the back check. Miles to Crazy gets tripped by Connor Brown. The Bruins are going to get a power play out of this. Ludovic vacates the net. Not like a Lyles, patient with the puck. Boston has the extra skater on. Sporter gives back six. to Miller. There's six players on the ice right now. There should be two minor penalties on Toronto here. <laughs> Bruins yeah. are trying to come through the yeah. neutral zone yeah. with six players. Toronto, yeah. they had six on the ice themselves on a delayed penalty call. It seemed awfully congested. But did the on-ice officials with four pair of eyes looking at the Toronto game catch it? Minor penalty tripping. And that's it. Well, the tripping penalty was uh, when the Bruins had possession. They were trying to work the puck out of their own zone. and. Uh, David Krejci decides to go for a little regroup, but when he does, Brown gets the stick in there. He's the goal scorer, but now he's in the penalty box. And here you go. Just because the Bruins have six skaters on the ice doesn't mean you can have six plus a goalie. Bruins didn't even have a goalie in the net. And that delayed penalty. They, I don't understand why there's not another minor penalty in Toronto. I think Claude Julian was uh, arguing exactly that. Referees tonight. John A. Bear and Trevor Hansen, Pierre Rasico and Mark Shuchik are the line. Power play brought to you by Plain Ridge Park Casino, the official sponsor of winning. Julian did not win his argument.
Zach Hyman faces the draw to Bacchus. Sarnik out high. Corey Cruz shot. Bacchus jamming, and Anderson makes the save. Krejci gloves it down at the line, but the Bruins can't keep possession. Komarov almost connects with Hyman. Corey Cruz drops it off for Krejci. Spooner. Laterally to Bacchus. Can't gather the puck. Martin off to Morgan Riley, who sends it 200 feet. Yeah, Bruins have a difficult time getting into any kind of setup in the offensive zone. They had a couple of nice keep ins, but they couldn't generate what they wanted. Go Leafs go again, the chance for the Air Canada center crowd. The great rattles the puck around through the corner. Frederick Anderson off the corner boards. Leo Clover off. Great Stabs at it. Hyman battles it. Comes to Sarnik off Riley's stick. Riley whacks it out of the air. Krejci hustles to keep the puck in the zone. Draws Hyman. Gives over to Spooner to Sarnik. Back to Spooner. His drive. Krug, of course, on that far side. Not Spooner, as I originally said. The saucer pass back to Krejci. Fakes the shot. Takes the shot. And Hyman makes the block. And clubs it out. I just want to go back to the why, you know, the, this isn't a five on three. They, they missed the call clearly because we showed you there's six leaps. I mean, why not empty your entire bench if you're not going to call? <laughs> Pasternak gets decked as Hunwick knocks him flat. 15 seconds to go in Connor Brown's tripping penalty. Pasternak to the red line. Wobbles run into Carrick's corner. Off the Hunwick line pass right to Pasternak. Bolesky off the boards. Colin Miller over to Wild Slap. Pass Bolesky to tip wide. One shot during the power play, but the Bruins still have the puck in the attacking zone. Yet even strength. Marchand stumbles. Bolesky muscles it loose. Miller, the backhand toss. Pasternak one and one timer, but that would have been a magnificent feat of hand eye. Uh, yeah, hand-eye coordination to get that stick on that bouncing puck. Pasternak and Carrick in the corner, but the Bruins come away with it again as Marchand gets it middle. Colin Miller off a couple of sticks and skates, and Pasternak controls the center. Yeah, power play, they just could not get in sync. They, they couldn't get anything going through the neutral zone with speed. They didn't create two-on-ones through the neutral zone. They didn't get carry-ins. The dump-ins weren't effective. They give the Leafs credit. Good effort on the PK. Boston had back-to-back -back strong PKs. The Leafs have a good PK. Sight said to Bozak. Marner's shot scores! Max Marner with his first NHL goal! Well, the Bruins are chasing the score again, Jack. They don't get much with that power play, and then a nice little play through the neutral zone. Just way too much of a gap there. Brandon Carlo, you can't allow a guy like Marner that kind of space. You're going to give him a little room to make up some speed. He's going to get into a shooting area. This guy was the CHL Player of the Year for a reason. 116 points in 57 games in junior. The fourth overall pick, and he's showing you that skill. He's going to pick that puck through the neutral zone. Continue to get faster coming across the blue line, but the Bruins gave him too much space and he took advantage. He's pulled by Hudobin on the blocker side. Well, Marner is a player who can change games in a lot of ways. He has a ton of energy, obviously outstanding speed, but he has that characteristic where he makes the players around him better. He reads his teammates in situations exceptionally well, and that's a trait we're seeing more and more with these young stars coming into the NHL before the age of 20. High hockey IQ. Matt Hunwick trying to save Hudobin. Nylander looking to punch in a third goal for Toronto in the opening period. The Bruins for the second straight game in a 2-0 first period home. Danson Heinen wins the puck in the corner. Spooner cross ice. Krejci tries to dangle around. Hunwick slides it off the boards. Heinen and Zaitsev pile into the end boards. Krejci takes Heinen's speed but couldn't do much with it. Didn't have a whole lot of space. Krejci in the corner. 
Matthews gives him a pretty good hit with the stick. Poleski turning away from Nylander, the back diagonal. Colin Millens drives save. Anderson, and he controls it between the knees. 7 7 to go in the first period. The Leafs have taken off to a 2-0 lead. Here's Sarah Davis with the Xfinity Report. Well, it may come from Brad Marchand. This morning we talked to Leafs head coach Mike Babcock, who also coached Marchand in the World Cup of Hockey. And Jack, earlier you mentioned Marchand's two goal, three assist game on opening night. Well, Babcock called Marchand a star for that performance, called it unbelievable. And he thinks the confidence that Marchand gained in the World Cup of Hockey is just going to carry on over to the Bruins. And guys, let's see if that happens tonight. Yeah, well, they've dug themselves a pretty deep hole. And uh, this Toronto team, if it can keep the puck in the attacking zone, and the power plays help them do that, can be a very troublesome club. On Jarek off the boards. Colin Miller gets a boot on it, and it flips into the Toronto bench. shots on goal two of them have gotten by not a lot he could do about either one the first he was stuck on the wrong side of a pile in a scramble and the other was a laser from Mitch Marner Tyler pulls that cross ice Van Riemsdyk closing dangles inside the back and scores James Van Riemsdyk makes it 3-0 This is something Toronto worked on a little bit this morning in the morning skate, that long pass to a stationary winger posted up at the offensive blue line. If the Bruins are going to go into that 1-2-2 and two, two, you can find that seam, you can get quick entry into the offensive zone. But the mistake on top of that is when Colin Miller comes across. The quick entry into the zone, Colin Miller is going to leave that uh, net driving forward and then he's going to lay out the minute he goes down and Van Riemsdyk is able to get that puck by him, now you're in trouble. That means the Leafs have numbers, and it's always the hard-to-read backhander for goaltenders. And if you get enough on it, you can score on the backhand, and he does. Low to the glove side. David Reisenstein, a couple of years at the University of New Hampshire. The number two overall pick. In 2007 for Philadelphia. And one of the premium power forwards in the National Hockey League. Chara's blast is wide. Carlo wrists it toward the front. And it's off the legs of Komarov. Bacchus wide with the puck. Marchand can't steer it middle. Cabrick tosses off the board. Carlo taps to Chara. Ask Marchand, no icing here. Well, we gave you the numbers that Frederick Anderson has posted against the Bruins. Go Leafs go again, the champ from the crowd. Anderson, 4 0 lifetime. And I'm just guessing from those numbers, he's only given up five or six goals in his entire career to the Bruins. Hudobin has to stick the puck out of his crease once again. Martin tries to muscle into the corner, leaves the puck behind O'Gara right in front of his own goal, but Krug is there. Krejci the tap. Hyman guns it past Spooner. Gets tied up with Martin. Holland back to Hunwick over to Zaitsev. Zaitsev probably didn't know who Chris Neal was, but he gave Hunwick a buddy pass in the first period the other night in Ottawa. And Neal on a very clean but brutal hit. He smashed Hunwick into the wall so hard that Hunwick's helmet sliced open his forehead and he looked like a Halloween costume. Yeah, Hunwick only played a couple of minutes in that game. That happened pretty early. Yep. Zeit says, uh, <laughs> Nylander's stick goes up into the protective netting and drops back onto the ice as Carlo whacked it out of his hands. Nash tries to steer it through, but Nylander, who was born into the game, literally, was waiting in the scene. 
Connor Carrick. <laughs> up into the crowd. Center circle. crowd booing as Carrick finished his check on Austin Matthews. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, How <laughs> dare he? <laughs> Bunwick fires it cross ice. Zaitsev. And uh, this is going to be delivered offside. No, no it's going to be a slash. I think it's going to be on Marner. <laughs> well, it's getting a little nasty here. The Leafs enjoying a 3 0 lead, and the Bruins trying to do something about it. For the Cup rankings, oh, so Austin nice. Matthews leads the league in goal scoring. Connor McDavid, man, did he score a beauty last night. Looked as if he'd been shot out of a rifle and he roofed the backhand. And then a pile on. Back is Marsh and Pasternak. All with two, joining ten others. Mitch Marner goes to the box for slashing, and the Bruins have a, uh, a power play that would be well served to produce a goal here. Down three early. Tomarov gobbles up the puck and brings it back into his own zone. Krejci with Hyman approaching. Hyman. Another one of the kids that plays not only with the skill, but a tremendous amount of positive energy. Great to Sarnik gets handcuffed by the pass. There's Hyman. Finally cutting off his pressure against Gretchy. Corey Krug carries. Indirect back to Krejci. Spooner holds on the half boards against Matt Mark. Indirect to Krejci. Sarnik is the bumper. Sarnik to Krejci. Krug draws Mark. Krejci to Spooner. Still on the perimeter. Now throws it to Bacchus in front. Shovels it across. Krug picks it up on the board. Down low. Bacchus tries to ram the puck against the stick and gets the rebound he sought. Martin lost his stick, but Toronto's able to clear. And Boston's got to get on the same page here on this foul play when they're trying to make plays. It's almost a pass and then a react instead of being moving before the pass is made because you know a play is going to happen with the cues that should be there. Lyle seals off the boards but has to deal with Hyman over there. Boleski wheels it back to Lyles and Hyman is jabbing away. You can see his kinetic movements. Two and a half to go in the period. About 20 seconds to go in Boston's power play. Pasternak takes the take to Marsh and pulls up just over the blue line, drawing three. At least Lyles down low in the shot, scores! David Pasternak roofs it from John Michael Lyles and Brad Marsh and, and what do you know? The Bruins are climbing back in this one. Well, this is huge. The Bruins needed some with this man advantage. The last time, the Maple Leafs had a strong penalty kill. They got an offense going right after. Well, the Bruins down three, chasing the score. A couple of great plays here. The first one's by Marsh and gaining the blue line. Toronto is really concentrating on 63 tonight. They've had two or three players around him every opportunity. Don't isolate, don't get one on one, have layers against him. But how about Michael Lyles? I mean, absolutely freezes Freddie Anderson. He makes him come out to the top of the blue paint because he kept walking in, walking in. And the minute the goaltender comes out just far enough, Kostanak opens up on that wide side. That's what we're talking about, Jack. Expect the puck, go to the right place before it happens, and Kostanak opens up like a good goal scorer should, and Lyles finds it. Bruins' goal was brought to you by Audi. Ready? Carlo cranks one all the way around. Comes off more skates as he angled the blades. Austin Matthews carrying with authority. The 19-year-old up to the red line. Achari gives him a bump. Carlo gets his body between Matthews and the puck, but he uses his stick to get it free. Jake Gardner, the defenseman, past the hash mark, jabbing his stick against Achari. Hyman takes the floater at the blue line. Achari bumps him. Nash can't wiggle it away from William Nylander. Achari without the stick throws the shoulder into Matthews, who barely budges. The kid goes about 220. Wait till he fills out. Dominic Moore in the corner has Jimmy Hayes, the one-timer. Juicy rebound, comes all the way to Krejci. Krejci, patient with the puck, pulls it away from Gardner, keeps possession. O'Gara can't keep it inside the line. Krejci was hoping O'Gara would move just a little bit sooner, a stride sooner, and then he'd be there, would have to reach for it. Hunwick wheels the puck back to center. Also not to be lost on the Boston goal, how three Leafs 
converged on Marsh and he saw it and then got the puck across. Shouldn't say also, because you didn't mention. <laughs> but you know, there are a lot of players who would eat it or just get yeah, it deep. No, no re-emphasize it, Jack. Re-emphasize it. Every time Ashan has been on the puck tonight, he's had at least two leaps right on him. And clearly the eating from Mike Babcock and the coaching staff for Toronto. Don't let this guy beat us with his abilities to make plays. We've got to take it away from him. Molesky and Marincin. Up 35 seconds to go in the period. McCulloch wins the puck in the corner. Bacchus bangs with him. O'Gara to Bacchus. Komarov throws the body into Bacchus. Cabri, the soft pass to Riley. Marincin's drive to flex jump wide of the post. Cabri in direct. Marincin with less than 20 to go in the period. Cabri turns, fires. It's off the leg, never got through. Marincin holds it the line, wrists it off Komarov's stick. Bacchus around the corner. Riley keeps it in. Komarov's shot. Save Hudobin. And the clock finally runs out with the Bruins stuck in their own end of the ice. An immediate response from Toronto. And some big moments for Anton Hudobin after the Bruins finally get on the board. Uh, we used the term gift goals in the game against Columbus. I won't say all three were gifts tonight, but some mistakes that are certainly correctable. And the Bruins, they hung tough. They get a big goal late to keep themselves within striking distance. Dale down two after one. It's getting to be a familiar theme. <laughs> Intermission report brought to you by Plain Ridge Park Casino, the official sponsor of winning. Let's give you what we know, okay? Tuka Rask did not practice yesterday. It was called a maintenance day. He was the first goaltender off the ice at the morning skate today. Optional. Optional morning skate yep. today. And then Anton Hudobin started the game. That's all we know. And Claude Julien, via quotes, was talking about how he wanted to keep both goaltenders involved early, that he didn't want Hudobin to sit too long. He wanted to get involved in the game. I thought all along, all things being equal, the two Karras would get first two games and then Anton Hudobin would play in Winnipeg. What I think doesn't matter, but it leads you to wonder, did we see you know, two Karras get a teeny bit hurt? I don't know. Did, you know I, I guess if it was 3 nothing, Dale going after the first period, if that goal by Pasternak wasn't scored, I'm curious if two Karras would have come in. I don't think he will right now. Let's start it out, because the uh, Maple Leafs scored the first three. Connor Brown got the Maple Leafs on the board first. Yeah, and we're going to touch on this even more later, but this is kind of off a of face-off loss. The Bruins in the first period of face-offs were not good. Direct shot from the point. It ends up hitting Colin Miller. He's looking for his man. The puck hits him, and it deadens it right there. Brown comes in, and he doesn't take no for an answer. He's going to turn, pivot, come right to the net, right down the middle of the ice. He's going to find the puck where Colin Miller can't find it right there. Beats his man Bolesky off the face off there, and he just shovels it up top. But that was a sign of things to come, especially for the Bruins in that period, especially in the face off circle. Well, a 1 0 lead quickly became a 3 0 lead. Mitch Marner got his first of the year. James Van Riemsdyk got his first of the year. In our pregame show, we talked about Austin Matthews, but we mentioned that Marner had three quality chances in the first period alone in game one against Ottawa. He was due for one, right? Well, if there's a player such thing as due in his second NHL game. But this is what he's all about. This ability to get the puck and watch. He's like, you know what it reminds me of a bit right here? And I'm not comparing him yet. But Mike Boss is coming down that wing. Now, Bossy would take the slap shot. But the speed and the shooting and strike. How about he picks up the puck behind him? Brings it to his forehand. And in one motion, he brings it. Beautiful goal there. Sometimes you just got to admire and admit that was a heck of a goal. Granted, the Bruins gave up the middle of the ice. Another lost face off late in the game, late in the period, beg your pardon. Tic-tac-toe type of play. Another high skill play there by Van Reems, like as he kicks it up to himself. But this is where the Bruins, I felt, were losing men based off of east-west movement. They just never, look at the, the spacing, and look at how deep their D are. And then next thing you know, everybody's flying, diving, moving. And they don't come back just to the middle to protect right there. They're all over the place. The Leafs, to their credit, Flying for a while. The Bruins to there, mm, not so much. Mitch Marner got a slashing penalty at 15:46 of the period. David Pasternak got a huge goal for the Bruins to at least give them some life going into the intermission. Yeah, and, and it's a nice finish by David, no question about it. But this is all going to be about the play, the little freeze play. 
by John Michael Lyles. This play, the Bruins get the puck up the ice quickly near the end of the power play. Marshan is going to spin. He brings three Leafs over to him. That opens up a, almost a three-on-one if you include Bolesky in front of the net. Lyles is just going to have to read this play. And as you'll see from this angle right here, Lyles 26, left part of your screen coming in. Watch right here. Just a little, the arms, the hands. All he does is he doesn't give away. Am I going to pass or shoot? As soon as he makes that decision, he opens up the bottom hand, pushes the puck over to Pasternak, who opens up. And by opening up right there, he's able to one-timer. This look is going to be real nice. Watch right here. Opens. Ready, lock and load, upper corner over Freddie Anderson. 3-1 Toronto with the lead at the end of the first period of play. Plenty more to come on this first intermission report. Brought to you by Plain Ridge Park Casino. Up next, Sarah Davis goes one-on-one -on -one with Tyler Bozak. Bruins first intermission report on Nesson is brought to you by Plain Ridge Park Casino, the official sponsor of winning. Brought to you by Plain Ridge Park Casino. Bruins trailing Toronto 3 to 1 despite out shooting the Leafs 9 to 8 chances pretty even 4 3 in favor of Toronto look at the face offs though more on that in just a couple of minutes after the period Sarah Davis spoke with Tyler Bozak Tyler the night starts with the centennial celebration then you also have Austin Matthews record breaking night just what is the team feeding off of in that first period yeah I mean I think we got a lot of energy these young guys bring a ton of energy they got a ton of skill and a ton of speed so I think we feed off that and um, you know, obviously tonight's a special night. It's a lot of first games for a lot of guys at home. So uh, we wanted to come out hard, and I thought we did a pretty good job. You factored into Mitch Marner's first NHL goal. How are the young guys like Marner and Matthews changing the face of this team? I mean, huge. I think, uh, you know, they're guys we already count on every night, and, you know, we, we expect them to produce, and they've been producing, obviously, as you've, as you've seen. So uh, they're going to be a huge part of our team moving forward, and they're just going to get more confident and better as we go on. Bruins get one there at the end. Just what do you want to do to counter that going into the second? Yeah, I mean, we know they're going to come hard. You know, they're a great team. They got a lot of ability, um, a lot of goal scoring, you know, Marshawn and those guys. So we got to be ready and uh, we got to keep keep coming at them, try and get the next goal. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Billy, as we showed you, Bruins beaten 16 4 in the faceoff circle in the first. What was going on? Uh, not a lot of quickness, not a lot of anticipation. And even when they want a face-off or two, they end up losing the battle. And not acceptable. They need to be better in this regard. Face-off led to goal. This is going to be that face-off win by Holland right here. It's going to lead to the Brown goal. Clean back. Zarnik's going to have to learn. He's going to have to get stronger. Here, Krejci, who didn't have a good period either. See that's that little stick play there by Zach Hyman beating O'Gara? That's just a subtle little play. Leads to an opportunity. Bruins also didn't decipher after losing face-offs men to take. Lose it in the offensive zone. What does it lead to? How about a breakout? Neutral zone. Again, battles. You lose it. Get support in there. Help each other out. Uh-uh. The Leafs get it, and this is going to be that play. D to D. Cross ice through the middle of the ice. It's going to lead to this opportunity, and a great play and a goal. And even when the Bruins win a draw, Bax is actually going to win one here. Look what happens. Komarov gets the puck and exits the zone right there. Simple little thing, right, Dale? They need to be much better at it. Still more to come on this first intermission report. When we come back in just a couple of minutes, we'll try to figure out, is there a history between Kadri and Bacchus? The Connor Brown goal. Nazem Kadri and David Bacchus got into a battle, and it got us thinking as soon as we saw it, there must be some history between these two. Yeah, let's start with tonight's scrap, and you're going to see as they're separated right here. Bacchus is already uh, John with Kadri right there. See him? You want to go? All right, you see the little head nod right there, then the little slap of the stick? Where you're thinking, what the heck are they going for right there? They square off. Kadri is not nearly as much of a, a, a fighter as Bacchus has been. Both players do all right. Both players land some. This is what happened last year. See Kadri's stick was broken right there? He cross-checked Bacchus, and then Bacchus went after him a bit, not going to fight. Then all of a sudden, Kadri says, right there. All right, fine. You want to fight? Here comes Bacchus. And this one, Kadri did not fare nearly as well. So this was the result tonight, I think, of their meeting last year. But I also think David Backus is saying, listen, we got scored against. Come on, you and I right now, Kadri to back down. After the break, we take you back to Jack Edwards, Andy Brickley, and Sarah Davis. Bruins first intermission report on Nesson is brought to you by Plain Ridge Park Casino, the official sponsor of winning. Buy Ace Ticket. It's more than a ticket. Buy Echo Store Technologies, your data center solutions provider. Buy Toyota's official website for deals. Buy at Toyota.com. And buy Dairy Queen. Opening week is presented by the DQ Five Buck Lunch. Available all day for a limited time. 
Alongside Andy Brickley with Sarah Davis at Ice Level and our Nesson production team, I'm Jack Edwards, coming your way live from Air Canada Centre in Toronto, where the Leafs jumped out to a 3-0 lead, but the Bruins got the last one before the first period ended. Road ahead brought to you by Nissan. The Bruins head out to Winnipeg after the game tonight. Patriots game starts at uh, noon central time, I'm told. Uh, then they'll play Winnipeg. We'll be on the air with you at 7 p.m. Monday, and the game time is 8 p.m. on Nesson. Sarah Davis is downstairs. That I am, Jack. And just around the block here from the Air Canada Center is the Hockey Hall of Fame. Yesterday, Bruins centerman Riley Nash took a tour of it with us. Turns out Nash's dad is a huge Bobby Orr fan. So, of course, we had to go hunt down number four's old jersey. We went to the Grand Hall. And of course, a must-see, the Stanley Cup. But we also oh, went to the interactive area. Cool. <laughs> and Nash, not only playing tourists with us, he played on, Netminder. But you know what? I gave him a run for his money. You're going to see it in just a second. And on Monday before the game, check this save out. Nice. Love save. Yeah. On Monday before the game, you're going to get to see who was better in net and the full tour, which was pretty cool, guys. Was that a reflex save or was that position? Did the puck just hit the glove? Big second period for the Bruins here. The margin of error is almost zero. Chara bumps Cadbury. Marshan scrapes the puck into the attacking zone. Morgan Riley right through the seam. Komarov knocks it out of the air. Tries to risk it through Marshan. No go there. Chara. Harlow to Bacchus. Cadbury got in Bacchus's way. Now Cadbury gets pasted on Chara's check. <laughs> Cadbury looked over his shoulder as if to take a number. He ought to know. <laughs> no license plate necessary. Van Riemsdyk drops, Marner's shot saved by Hukovic, rattles around loose in front. And Marchand comes up with a puck at the goal line and lofts it out. It almost looked like Hukovic had to make a second save yep. when Carlo tried to fire it to the corner. Yeah, he was doing the 360 down there on the ice after making a sparkling initial save. Yeah, Bruins puck management not good at the tail end of that shift. The turnover leads to that opportunity. Corey Krug swings the puck to Chara. Has Spooner in front of him. Krejci on the far side. Around. Hunwick throws the hip into Krejci. Austin Matthews chips it over. Nikita Zaitsev cross ice. O'Gara knocks the puck away from Nylander. Heinen fires it into Zaitsev's leg. Matthews down in the corner. Hind into Krejci, couldn't control the puck as Matthews went through his stick. Three on two, Nylander to Matthews. Krug waves at it. Spooner has the puck in his skates but can't control. Matthews back after it. Chips past Krejci. Nylander past Matthews. Spooner, good work in tight quarters. Krejci can't get it through Nylander's shaft. Both teams change out. Jimmy Hayes fresh off the bench, turns toward the red line and then curls back. Through Boleski, long indirect looking for a Hayes. Connor Brown flips it ahead. Through takes the bump from Martin. Gardner keeping Hayes from getting to the puck down in the corner. Zarnik hustles in, gets it away from Connor Carrick, but Holland feeds it forward to Connor Brown, who has a goal tonight. The backhand bounces through the slot, nobody home. Carrick takes a whack at it. Brown sends it all the way through to Martin. The big body gets stacked up as Colin Miller muscles him into the end wall. Holland up to the hash marks along the boards. Lyles taps over to Colin Miller in front of his own goal. Zarnik used the body to spin away from Holland, who keeps poking away with the stick. Zarnik fires it back to Boleski. Boleski low for Hayes on a bounce, throws it toward the goal. Bozak is there to spring Marner, flying up ice, and this time Carlo doesn't give him space. Marner comes up with a puck on the end board. Carlo taps it ahead to Achari. 
One of the attributes that they like so much about Brandon Carlo is that although he makes mistakes, as all young defensemen do, he is able to flip the switch and make a better play the next time. Yeah, what are you learning? What are you learning from the mistakes, and what adjustments are you going to make? One respected veteran of the Canadian media said, Carlo reminds him a little bit of Colton Pareko. And I said, we hope so. <laughs> Pareko had an incredible rookie year last season. As cold weather approaches, remember, you can restore order with a Boss snowplow. Find a dealer at bossplow.com. You know, you take a look at that first period and you say, were there a couple of goals? Was there one goal maybe he wanted back? Maybe he wanted Hudobin to make a save? We talked about, you know, how to read the back end and there was a little traffic. The first one was a rebound right top of the crease. Where Brown went top shelf. Great shot by Marner. I mean, can he, can, can Hudobin make that save? He made a nice save on Marner here in this period after that turnover that we talked about in Van Riemsdyk on the back end pass. Marner in the high slot. After Pasternak tries the short side, here's Carlos shot back is getting in a jam with Riley now. He mugs Comer off in the corner, freeing Marshan to get the puck to Chara. Indirect off the corner wall. Pasternak gets angled in on Komarov's check, and Kadri skates it forward. Kadri has McCulloch on his right, tries to curl and drag through Carlo, can't pull it off. Chara up the wall, Marshan saucers it cross ice. Pasternak on the backhand pivot. Gives the back as he fires it off the of sight set stick. Chara into the corner, gets it around to Marshan, dangles in by the feet, turns it past McCulloch, gets the return from Achari, who's just changed onto the ice. Marshan to O'Gara, fresh off the Boston bench, couldn't get much on the backhand punch, and Toronto clear. Yeah, tough pass to handle, unfortunately, for O'Gara. game. O'Gara stands up at the line and the puck slides to Krug. Krug the quick re-entry with some Nash. Zeitz tries to stack Nash up but he rubs off the check. Matthews battles for the puck in the corner. Hyman at the hash marks and Achari knocks into him. Noel Achari won a job late last season by playing straight line hockey and getting in people's faces and that is his game. Hyman and Krug now to the end wall behind Hudobin. More wrestles. Nylander comes up with the loose puck. It doesn't get to Connor Carrick. The Bruins will change on the clear. Gardner's pass off a skate. Now Garrett trying to gain ground on Matthews. Comes away with the puck. Round for Hayes. Takes the bump from Carrick. Tries to muscle it through to Bolesky. Hyman out of the corner. Cuts it hard. Right foot. Collins' shot goes over the top. Well, Zach Hyman has really changed the game on his shifts. Tremendous energy, great quickness. Carrick with possession. Tripping is the signal. Boston has a power play goal in this game and looks for another when it resumes. It's going to go. Tripping the Bruins, as you pointed out, Jack, trying to get some offensive zone time. We talked about at the top of the broadcast, make the Leafs have to defend in their own end. You'll score some goals if you can do that, spend some time there. Well, not only do you get a little pressure, you draw the penalty to Gardner, and now you get the man advantage. A place where you scored a goal in the first period, you cut this lead down to 3-2. Iman, who has had a pretty good penalty killing night, one of the forwards, he'll take the draw along with Komarov. Morgan Riley and Martin Marincin are the defensemen. David Backus, Ryan Spooner, Danton Heinen, Tori Krug, and David Krejci, the power play unit for Flo Julian's goal. Boss has got to do a better job in the circle. We mentioned that after the first period in Columbus, and they got better the deeper they got into the game. But that first period, 20 faceoffs, Bruins only won four. Krug carries in his zone. Backus tries to get it deep. Riley up off Heinen's stick. Krejci, the only man back, guarding a two-on-one. Komarov here, fires and a glove, stopped by Hudobin, a shorthanded bid, Leo Komarov. Well, they just worked this puck up the wall, Backus can't win the battle, and all of a sudden, 
potential two-on-one, maybe even a breakaway. David Krejci, though, able to take a decent enough angle and be able to get back to prevent a two-on-one to get close to the net. Komarov had to take that shot from between the dot and the tops of the circles. Glove stop. Komarov's got four goals in ten games against Boston. Been a bit of a pain, hasn't he? Yes, he has. <laughs> Heinen swings the puck down through the corner. Riley spins it right back in that direction. Krug across to Krejci, back to Krug. Krejci facing Matt Martin, who went down to a knee. Spooner holds against Riley, opens up the seam for Krug. Krug shot, save, rebound. Spooner tried to punch it in, but couldn't get contact with the puck in midair. Connor Brown showing his speed to get to the puck first against Krug. Krug goes down, Brown in front. Turns and fires, it's just wide. Krug almost inadvertently knocked it into his own goal as he's scrambling around the far post. Connor Brown has one tonight. Marshan slicing inside. Carrick, who's strong on the stick, and takes Marshan down. Half a minute to go in the Boston power play. Go Leafs go, the champ from the crowd. Colin Miller to David Pasternak holds the puck way out in front of him so Hunger can't get there. And there's Hyman again. <laughs> Colin Miller off Pasternak's stick. He pulls up. Connor Brown with the hard hit to disrupt the flow. The Bruins just have not been sharp. No, not, not only not sharp, Jack, but uh, they're not winning enough battles. you got to win battles. He won the power play. Bolesky. And a shot with purpose as Nash was going to the net. Anderson steered the rebound to safety. Nash sends it low. Back to even strength. Nash's shot off a leg. Comes right to Lyle. Snaps it through the slot. Nobody home. Achari, the backhand tap. Brandon Carlo on the paint. Sends it to the corner. Nash takes the bump from Carrick. Turns and faces and tries to tear the stick away. And the referee thought about it. He was reaching, but then he decided it wasn't going to be a holding the stick or a hold or a hook or what have you. Carlo, one touch pass for Dominic Moore, indirect from Nash on the angle. Nash carries into the corner. Carrick cuts him off. Gardner pokes the puck loose, but Moore is there. Gardner wraps up Moore with the loose hand. Now gives him a shove. Moore. Around the perimeter, Chara back pedals off the boards, wiggles it forward for Nash, elevating the puck. Carlo the slap pass low for Moore. The diagonal looking for Chara. And Marincha and Marner rather breaks it up. Jimmy Hayes lugs the puck over the line, holds it wide. Sykes and plays the body and stacks it to the end boards as Austin Matthews swoops in. Matthews twists the wrists. Riley saucers it over to William Nylander to Van Riemsdyk. The off-foot shot goes well wide. Yeah, he was looking for Riley off that weak side post. Zaitsev ahead to Van Riemsdyk, right back into the attack zone. Nylander sweeps a shot on Hudobin. Now feeds Matthews, and Hudobin makes the squeeze save with the trapper against the block. Be a TD Garden for Bruins opening night, presented by TD Bank this Thursday when the Bruins face the Devils. Select tickets are still available, and the puck drops at 7 o'clock. To get your tickets, visit bostonbruins.com slash tickets or use the Bruins mobile app. Well, one thing that jumps out about this game is Toronto's aggressiveness in races for the puck. Not only the speed, but throwing the body in there as they approach the puck, and they're winning a lot of those battles. Marincin, the wrist shot. Back is blocking it down. Marincin can't handle the hot pass coming back from McCulloch. Now Marincin up the wall. McCulloch gets a piece of the puck. No icing. Hudobin swivels it to Lyles. McCulloch battles it away from him. Tries to one-hand it in front. Colin Miller holds. Now goes up the boards. Marshan touched it from behind the red line. It's icing against Boston. Weekdays on Nesson Live, presented by Cross Insurance. Get the most up-to-date news on all of New England sports. Stay up-to-date right here on Nesson with Nesson Live each weekday evening at 5.30. So off the icing, Mike Babcock wants Tyler Bozak, James Van Riemsdyk, and Mitch Marner on the ice. 
Gardner scrambles to keep the puck in the attacking zone. Carrick drives it hard around. Colin Miller has it pop off his backhand. Here's Bozak pivoting but giving it away. Pasternak from the center line gets a second chance and wrists it in on Anderson. Anderson clears all the way to Marner, but it bounces off. Spooner wheels it right back and it hops over Anderson's stick. Gardner to Marner. Heinen pokes it away from Carrick. Spooner holds all the way to the dot. Shot goes into Marner's legs and it's three on three off ice. Marner tries to self pass, picks it up around Chara. Van Riemsdyk in the middle couldn't knock down the aerial pass. Marner all over the attacking zone, the self pass around Spooner and Carlo was lining him up. Seitzef drives in high slot. Krejci goes over and buries Marner and the Bruins are going to get penalized. Collins shot and Hudobin makes the save. Barato has more lively legs. I think the penalty is going to be on Hudobin. Bruins going shorthanded already down two goals mid second in Toronto. But we're going to take a look at the one that they did get. Late first period, power play goal, a lot of things to like. We talked about Brad Marsh, and the minute he's handled the puck, whether it's an even strength or power play, there's been at least two leaps on him trying to take away time and space. Well, Marshan was able to beat three leaps in order to make this pass across the ice to John Michael Lyles. And you got to like the finish because David Pasenak opens up, gives Lyles a target. And Lyles carried that puck. The closer he got into that shooting position, Frederick Anderson, the goaltender, is going to respect the shot. He gets out to the top of the blue paint. Now the one-timer is a wide-open net for Pasenak. Berkshire Bank and Nesson have teamed up to assist three local nonprofit organizations through the Berkshire Bank Exciting Assists grant program. All season, Berkshire Bank will donate $100 for each Bruins assist to the campaign. To learn more about the Berkshire Bank Exciting Assist grant program, visit Nesson.com slash Berkshire Bank. Ryan Spooner goes to the box. No, he's just serving it. Yeah. It had had to be on uh, on Hugo, hadn't it? That was my presumption. Yeah. I did not hear the announcement. Uh, it's NBA deafening in this building this season. <laughs> well, this is a gigantic kill for the Bruins. William Nylander swivels it offline and out to center. Penalty being served by number 51, Ryan Spooner. Yeah, served by Spooner. Nash off the boards. Dominic Moore slides it by Zaitsev. Zaitsev very good on the power play. Carlo gets the body between Nylander and the puck, but there's Austin Matthews battling David Backus in the corner. Out to center, Marshan working against Zaitsev. Chara jumping up on the rush. Here's Backus to scoop up the loose puck on the shorthand. Backus has to go back for it on the end boards. Matthews stabs at it and frees the puck to Zaitsev. Taps it ahead. Mitch Marner flying toward John Michael Lyles. Pulls up over the line. Cross ice pass. Achari with good stick position to prevent Matthews from getting it cleanly. Bozak runs into O'Gara. Bolesky unable to clear. Matthews the body against Achari who can't take it clear. But on the carom, it's O'Gara to Lyles. Lyles drives it back. Finds Bolesky a little fake. Spins Marner around. Now he takes and goes around Bozak. Cannot feed it in front for Achari. 35 seconds to go on the penalty kill. Van Riemsdyk almost had a room service bounce off Carlos' stick. Bolesky battling at the line and then wedges it out to center. Achari flips it into the attack. Yeah, zone. a couple of almost shorthanded. The first one was Martian coming up that off wing. Maybe there was some help coming late, but he tried to make a one-on-one -on -one move. And then uh, Bolesky with a couple of chances on the drop pass from Lyles, just couldn't find a shooting lane. Cadbury stick handling in the crowd, looking for a call as he goes down on contact at the Boston line. Marner flips it into Nash's body. Nash stays with it, finds it as Spooner pops out of the box. Zero shots on the power play for Toronto, so an excellent kill by the Bruins. Now they got to turn it into some momentum. They're still down by two. Morgan Riley can't control Riley Nash. Krejci busting middle, Nash, he's shot short side, Anderson got a little piece. Here comes Connor Brown, gives it to Holland. Brown, the blind tap almost connected with Holland. Krug to hide it, he sweeps it forward. Conway 
Stop back of his goal. Krejci whacks the puck away. Heinen back to Lyles the drive, and Anderson steers the rebound far side. O'Gara jumps up to keep the puck active, but Sykes have controls. Long indirect looking for Matt Martin. No icing here. You go back to that two on one, Nash and Krejci, and you don't really like the second guess, but in that situation, you got to want to see Frederick Anderson have to make a save. I mean, worst case scenario. Zeitz says, shifts the puck ahead. Nylander hits Austin Matthews, closes on O'Gara, kicks saved by Udova. The rebound top of the circle, back is Marchand in transition, has Pasternak on the right. The puck pops up on Pasternak, wouldn't stay flat on the ice. Pasternak risks the puck around through the corner. Chara jumps down against Matthews, beats him to the puck, finds Marchand to Pasternak, saved by Anderson. I believe Marincin was there also. Hyman closes in transition in front, and the Bruins knock it down. Chara beats Pasternak up and down the ice. They go at Air Canada Center. Backus is shot, saved by Anderson. 4.44 to go in the second period. Fire wagon hockey between two original six teams. Poll is brought to you by Toyota's official website for deals, buyatoyota.com. We're asking you what change should be made to the World Cup of Hockey format. Reply A for location, B for teams, C for timing, or D for leave it as it is. Text your answer to 536-536. Jack and Brick looks pretty even across the board. You guys got any thoughts on this? I'm undecided. I'm going with location. <laughs> I don't know. The, the timing of it isn't great for me. It's, it's hard to get so fired up. It was high quality hockey, but uh, kind of hard to get it at that emotional level that uh, you have when teams have been playing for nine or ten months. Gardner turns his goal. Tries a long saucer pass. O'Gara knocks it down. Van Riemsdyk unable to come up with the puck in the pile. Bozak staples Bolesky in. Van Riemsdyk skips the puck all the way to the end wall. O'Gara off Marner's stick. Marner comes up with it, brings it back. But Carrick, I don't know if he took his eye off it or raised the stick and the puck slipped under. Gardner, the long pass. Marner handles it and goes cross corner. O'Gara prevents that from happening. Moore tears away from Marner's stick. Zaitsev is there. D to D to Hunwick. Nikita Zaitsev, a little shift. Has to go all the way to the boards to get the puck into the attacking zone. With Hudobin stopping the puck, they call it delayed offside. Riley Nash, Dominic Moore, and Nola Chari. Chari having a pretty good go with Matt Martin. They're jousting with the sticks. Here's Achari. And there's Martin paying him back. He took the hit to move the puck. Now the Bruins have new memorable advantage coming up ice. Colin Miller pivots back, can't get the shot through Holland. He tosses it to space. Lyles gets the quick re-entry. Goes right after Hunwick. Lyle slides it around to Nash. Nash tries to get away from Zaitsev. Zaitsev wraps him up in the corner. Achari sticks it through both of their skates. Hunwick gets the puck back of his own goal. Protects it. Flips it toward Holland in traffic. Connor Brown against Carlo. Carlo stacks it up. And more end over end to the corner. The Bruins will change out. Nash does a nice job of uh, knowing where he is relative to the boards and protecting the puck. He's got to add that quick separation in order to create a little bit more offense in that offense in and in. When he does that, there are plays to be made. Char wins the puck from McCulloch. Carlos blast goes wide. Krejci turns out of the corner. Matthews on him. Krejci to Heinen to Carlo. Double deflection and it's wide. Spooner scrapes it down toward Krejci. McCulloch jabbing at the puck. Spooner shields it, tries to get it inside. Good layers for Toronto. Matthews gives it right side for Cadre. Charles holds. Austin Matthews couldn't settle the puck. Carrick's shot never gets through to Hudobin. 
Krug strides out the center. Heinen fires it off the corner glass. The Bruins want to change with about two to go. Gardner gives it to William Nylander. He accelerates toward Krug. Krug plays the body. Nylander after the puck. O'Gara is there in the corner. Hyman energizing away from Bacchus, but Boston comes up with it again. Krug's pass finds Marincin's stick. He gets the puck deep. Yeah, delayed offside. Toronto had to back off. That's why they didn't pursue the puck deep. Pasternak carries over the attacking line. Marchand's one-timer off Riley's skate and wide. Nylander with his head up, looking up ice. Nothing long goes short for Komarov. Backus with contact against Morgan Riley, and that produces the turnover. Lyles long diagonal. Pasternak looks around Komarov, but gives the puck to Riley. The Leaf defenseman gives it to Colin Miller, but he gives it away in turn. Nylander in the corner. Komarov going underneath. William Nylander with Zach Hyman stacked at the near post. Nylander into Zarnik skates. Austin Zarnik across the Boston zone. Clicking toward a minute to go. Toronto leading the Bruins 3-1 after having jumped out to a 3-0 first period lead. Matt Molesky turns and hurls it wide. Carlo bangs against Van Riemsdyk to free the puck for Zarnik. Zaitsev lifts the backhand, Shara knocks it down, rattles it all the way around. Zarnik turning in the corner, runs into Marincin's check. Jimmy Hayes keeps it to Zarnik. Chara over to Carlo, the pass a little offline as Chara had gone to the middle of the zone. In the middle of the blue line, I should say. Less than half a minute to go in the period. A lot of zone time, no chances. Richard has Bozak swinging left. And now gives to Mitch Marner. Marner from the red line. A soft toss into Krug's corner in the final 10 seconds. Corey Krug up to the red line. And this is a delayed offside as Achari was trying to drag the puck along. Less than a second to go. Some good moments for the Bruins, but they need some goals. Yeah, exactly right. With the score at 3-1, there was a sequence where the Bruins had three pretty good opportunities. Started with the Nash Krejci two-on-one. Nash misses the net short side. Pasternak right at the top of the, or right in the middle of the slot. On a nice play, Char to Marshan from behind the net. And then back is off a rush transition game from the off wing. I mean, those three chances came in short order, but the Bruins still trail by two. Connor Brown, Mitch Marner, and James Van Riemsdyk all scored in the first 13 and a half minutes of this game. Pasternak has the Bruins back within two, but only 20 minutes to go to make up the deficit, Dale. Thanks very much, Jack. Welcome to this second intermission report brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. Dale Arnold, Billy Jaffe here in our Nesson Studios. Better. Not the results to show for it, but better and some scoring chances late in the period. Yeah, some elements that were better. Um, I thought the Bruins had a hard time at handling the puck. I don't know if it's the ice surface there or not. But finally, we had some good energy late in that uh, second period. They had three or four good chances for the Bruins, Dale. And, you know, they, they, if you play that game, if they had gotten one of these, you head into the third period down by one, uh, it's anybody's game. I, I, you know, we saw that, that Nash line out there. That was a bit of a mixture right there. They had some good chances near the end. An excellent opportunity right there, right coming down the slot, but Anderson gets the right pad on it. Pasternak with the pull up over to Bacchus. And again, Freddie Anderson, who did not have a good first game. And he gave up, you know, four. They still aren't getting the win in overtime, but got a vote of confidence for Mike Babcock. He looked good near the end of that second period. Bruins gave up a power play goal to Columbus on Thursday. Toronto's had three chances on the power play in tonight's game. And I think the Bruins penalty killing looks much better. Consistent. I mean, that's that's been perhaps the most consistent aspect of this game. And I, I have them as only just one power play chance, meaning one shot that has gotten through. Uh, for a team in the first period that was really at times off, the Bruins PK in the first and in the second was really good. This is where they've won their most battles. I feel like they've anticipated well. They've supported each other real well. They've kept the play to the outside. They've been able to attack. Uh, we always talk about the 50-50 battle areas. They've picked their spots well. And again, look at that, a one-on-two, a one-on-three, really, 
one hand single handedly won by by Matt Molesky but good rotation good getting back good being below the puck in the right spot and then making sure they get it down to me that's been one of their best aspects of this game we were admittedly a bit surprised when Anton Hudobin led the team out onto the ice uh, at the Air Canada Center didn't think he was going to start tonight's game started slowly perhaps got better in the second period as well yeah I mean the team really started slowly Hudobin may have won one of them back but after this in, in, early in the second period to me this said that he was able to extricate that first period performance and come out and make some nice saves I thought his focus I thought his, his uh, meet and greet of the puck I thought was really good here in the second period. He had to make a couple of big saves. That one, there's a big rebound, but still, I mean, he gets that left hat out quickly. And then here, just finding the puck coming to him. I, I like his control in that second period. I, I thought he was solid. His meet and greet to the puck. That's a new Billyism. Get out there, baby. Meet I and greet I like it. those. <laughs> Plenty more to come on this New England Ford dealer's second intermission report. Up next, Sarah goes one-on-one -on -one with John Michael Lyle. Bruins second period intermission report on Nesson is brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. Summary brought to you by your New England Ford dealers. Same score as the first intermission. Bruins trail 3-1. to one. They've outshot Toronto 18-13. Been outchanced 10-7. Faceoff still an area of need for the Bruins through two periods. After the period, Sarah Davis spoke to Bruins defenseman John Michael Lyles. John Michael, you guys kept the Leafs off the board in the second period, but what's been the challenge playing against this team that's pushing the pace? Yeah, I mean, they push the pace really well, and, uh, you know, ultimately I think we have to, uh, you know, just make sure we uh, continue to get pucks in behind them and get a good forecheck going. We've generated some chances off the forecheck, and, uh, you know, unfortunately their goalie's made a couple of, couple of good, big saves, but we keep doing that. I think we'll be all right. The other night you guys showed you can come back from a two-goal deficit. Yeah. Does that, do you use that as motivation? Yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, you know, nobody in this room's quitting, and you know, they came out, uh, you know, they came out jumping, and uh, you know, we put ourselves in a bit of a hole, but uh, still 20 more minutes and uh, a lot of hockey left. Good luck in the third. Thanks, Billy. The David Pasternak goal in the first period came on the power play, yep. but the Bruins had a power play chance in the second that could have closed the gap a little bit. Not quite as successful. See, we showed those good chances a few moments ago, right? Before we went to break. Uh, there, they moved their feet, they handled the puck well. On the power play, if anything, Dale, I thought they were off, lethargic a bit. Um, not as emphatic as they need to be, especially like not winning battles like they did when killing penalties. Uh, this is where they could really help themselves out an awful lot. You know, here Krejci takes a good angle, helps out. But this is you're, you're talking, these are one-on-ones that they're being won by the other team. The Bruins lucky right there on that play by Brown. And then neutral zone play, they're slow with the puck. They're slow with their entrances. They're forcing it down the side, and it's isolated. It's one man against at least one or two uh, Toronto Maple Leafs. They're, again, right slow, not handling the puck well. It wasn't a very cohesive effort. It wasn't a very emphatic effort. Now they have 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a ton of time. Get one in the first 10. He's using young players even on the power play units. Well, he had Austin Zarnick in the middle, and then he had an opportunity where he gave Danton Heinen the opportunity to get out there. you, you, the, you got to use some of these young guys. This is their, their specialty. You know, they get out there and they have Colin Miller. They need to get his shot on net more, too. So getting the young guys out there, getting them involved, good thing. Plenty more to come on this New England Ford dealer second intermission report. Up next, we'll take a look at another young gun for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Mitch Marner. Toronto sale now for a limited time. To get yours, go to theglobies.com. The Globies, presented by Mercedes-Benz. New Jersey Devils at Tampa Bay. Middle of the second, Devils 2-1 lead. Corey Schneider makes the save on Nikita Kucherov. But Alex Kalorn with the rebound beats him for the goal. Second of the season for Kalorn. Lightning tie the game at two. That's where things stand in the second intermission. Austin Matthews had all the hype going into tonight's game after the four-goal performance in his opener. But the guy who's jumped out to us all night long is Mitch Marner. He's been outstanding. He's around the puck. He makes things happen. He's listed at six foot 170. My guess is it's probably 5'11", maybe 5'11 and a half, 165 pounds. But he commands the puck. His presence with it is great. He makes excellent decisions. Um, his patience, too, his creativity. Look a little past to himself. Off the wall, he's going to try and sauce it over. Doesn't quite met, uh, meet Van Riemsdyk. But his ability to do things, and right there, I mean, again, fearless. That's what a lot of these kids are nowadays, Dale. They are fearless with how 
with when they have the puck. And when they get it, they're thinking about, they're not trying to be fancy, they just are because of their skills and also their skating ability. Excellent ability to open up, facing the play, instead of always being close to it. Let's take a look at the uh, Bruins forwards' time on ice so far tonight and how things have broken down. Yeah, these are the top seven guys. So, you, you know, you're seeing Nash and Moore who've had to kill some penalties. They're getting ice time. They actually had about three or four shifts in a, in a pretty quick sequence later in that second period. I, I like the way they played in game one at Columbus. I wouldn't surprise me if Nash and Moore and Achari get a little more ice time in the third period. The, the so-called third line, the Zarnik line, hasn't been as uh, noticeable as, as I'm sure Claude Julian and his staff would like right there. They have a day off after this game. They'll travel to Winnipeg tonight, Dale, then a day off. And then they play the Jets, so nothing to hold back on. He'll try and play the hot guys as much as he can. And that'll do it for our second intermission report. When we come back after the break, Andy Brickley goes one-on-one -on -one with Bruins assistant coach Jay Pandolfo. To you by Toyota's official website for deals, buyatoyota.com. By Dunkin' Donuts, America runs on Dunkin'. And by Subaru of New England. Bruins looking for a big finish here after having trailed since 214 into the game alongside Andy Brickley with Sarah Davis at Ice Level and our Nesson production crew. I'm Jack Edwards. Let's fly to the bench for an interview with Brick and Bruins assistant coach Jay Pandolfo presented by the DQ five buck lunch available all day for a limited time. Jay, down by a pair going into the third period. What are you going to be looking for from the Bruins that'll be, that is going to be different than what we saw in the first 40? I think we just got to get pucks behind their D more and uh, get in on the four check. It seems like when we're doing that, we're getting to return it over a bit, but we, we got to do more of that. It, we're, we're not managing the puck well tonight so far. You think that's Toronto's weakness is uh, trying to defend in their own end? I think so. I think that's what we got to do. We got to play in their end. We, we've made it too easy on them so far. Is this a game that uh, is pivotal to the trip, or is it something that it's just uh, another game out of 180 uh, out of 82? No, it's important. We want to get off to a good start this year. Uh, it was nice to come back in the first game, and hopefully tonight we can uh, have the same result. Thanks, Jay. Good luck in the third. Thank you. Said got to play in their end, so they can't do stuff like this. A high strength steel play brought to you by the Chevy dealers of New England. Yeah, the breakdown, the puck mi uh, mismanagement, and then the decision making. We'd like to see Colin Miller stay on his feet in that situation. You know, if you make a nice sweep check, it looks good, but it's not really the high percentage play, and not really the right play. And Van Riemsdyk able to get a back in or away from the slot. Third goal of the night for Toronto. Miller playing the 44th game of his NHL career. And Van Riemsdyk has the great hands along with the big body and a whole lot of desire. Pasternak takes the puck after Chara breaks it up, tries to fight through Marinchin. Marchand takes a whack at it. Marinchin feeds Cabri, gets it cross ice. Riley, the defenseman, to Komarov. His pass off the tip of Marchand's blade. Marchand spins, gets sandwiched between McCulloch and Komarov. Marinchin curls the puck back. Carlo. Komarov bumps the puck loose. Toronto dumps in and changes out. Char long for Heinen, but he can't turn with the puck. Anderson flips to the corner. Marner. Gives it back for Zaitsev. Shovels it along the board. Krejci, Spooner, his pass deflected on Marner's check, and Zaitsev ices it. O'Gara wins the race. Well, the Bruins have had their troubles at the faceoff dot, as you mentioned. This is a big one in the attacking zone. Yeah, they need to establish some zone time and uh, and really make Toronto have to make some plays under some kind of duress. Use your quickness, use your speed, good angles. But if you can get some puck possession off a draw, better things happen. Crook to O'Gara, the drive wild high. Bozak tries to golf it past Krejci. Zaitsev bangs Krejci. Bozak gives it away. Spooner's shot up high short side. And Anderson gets the shoulder on it. Bruins change out. 
Riley Nash, Dominic Moore, and Noel Achari. Achari tries to kick to the stick. Bolts past Gardner. Moore in a tangle with Jake Gardner on the end wall. Gardner knocks him down. Nash mucking for the puck against Matthews. Matthews bumps Nash. Moore tries to connect with Colin Miller. Nylander with a burst of speed. Miller plays the body. Nylander curls back to the forehand. Gardner's wrist shot into the pile. Hyman trying to turn. The Lyles wouldn't let him get around and clear to his forehand side. No icing here as the puck deflected off Gardner. Connor Carrick, a little juke, goes indirect for Zach Hyman. That does not connect, and it's icing. Tonight, after Bruins coverage, keep it here for Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Nikki and Emerson will have more on the Bruins. The Patriots preview and highlights from the ALCS. Get the latest on all of New England sports tonight, immediately following the post game. Jimmy Hayes, Austin Zarnick, Matt Bolesky. Tori Krug and Rob O'Gara for Boston. Bolesky fires wide. O'Gara bounces into the corner. Carrick is there. He elevates the puck and it rolls right to Krug. Krug looking for a re-entry. Anderson spanks it out to Holland. He twists it into a couple of bodies. Zarnik wins the puck, guns it off the far board. Zaitsev back, but the goalie Anderson plays it to Hunwick, gets it through to Martin. Through control, draws Brown. Hayes off with the legs of Holland. Connor Brown comes back to the puck. Holland to Martin, top of the circle. Hudobin denies it. Carlo knocks down Martin. Connor Brown around through the corner. Riley past Postanak. Marincin chucks it deep. Martin holds off Carlo and tries to center it, but Hudobin will control. And Martin and Carlo get involved. Shara comes over to play policeman. Yeah, the entire shift and the Bruins are in their own zone. Those two are going at it pretty good. Carlo did a pretty good job of uh, having body position. He did fall down with contact, Jack, and he didn't have anything to brace his fall in his Almost caught his face first behind the net initially. Then he had to go retrieve his glove, get his stick right there. I mean, that's a scary feeling. Even though you're close proximity to the ice, if you don't have anything to brace your fall, yep. you're leading with your face. That's a little nasty. But you're trying to keep that body position between you and the net, eliminate any kind of play that Martin wants to make. Morgan Riley, the quick release off a couple of legs, still loose in the slot. Komarov off Carlo's leg. Komarov turns to the forehand, fires it right through the crease. I don't think Hudobin ever saw it. Marincin gets the puck to Cabri. He tries to drive it through Bacchus. They're old buddies by now, huh? Bacchus three on two over the blue line. Goes cross ice, pocket it up, right back through the crease. Looking for a teammate to go to the post for the tuck. Bacchus was a little behind it, and Marshan was passed. Komarov tries a short side rebound. McCulloch can't stuff it past Hudobin. Milan McCulloch twists the wrist. Marincin across the blue line. Riley to McCulloch. He tips it in. 4-1 Leafs. Such a common happenstance. You get a quality scoring chance at one end, and you give up a goal at the other. Bruins had a little something going after the steal by backs in their old zone. A cross pass in the offensive zone. Pasternak tried to then make another pass. And then the Bruins uh, get a little unlucky here, but again, they have enough bodies back. People need to be in the right position. Colin Miller's going to chase Komarov up into that high slot. Did he have the support behind him in order to do that? There needs to be some communication. Pasternak had lost an edge. Pasternak not sure who he was supposed to cover. Somebody needs to pick up McCulloch off that weak side post. Nice little redirect. Bruins again, down by three. Well, Milan McCulloch, when he can stay healthy, is a very effective forward. Here's Van Reeves, like taking a giveaway, and who stole it? Commits larceny against Mitch Barner, who was going unmolested across the crease. 
crew thought he had a play to the slot on a breakout using the middle of the defensive zone. It wasn't there. Well, if it was, it wasn't accurate. It was behind Krejci. Those are hard to defend when you turn the puck over like that right to the slot. And Reamsdrake finds Marner. Dobin makes his best save of the night. Corey Krug with Van Riemsdyk approaching. O'Gara to Danton Hyman. And slides the puck to Krejci. Tries to find a little bit of space and then lobs it to the right wing corner. Hyman there with Marner nearby. Hyman shields the puck but stumbles in contact with Gardner. Marner around the boards. Miles to Spooner in front for Krejci, but Bozak gets a stick on it. This one whistles wide as Colin Miller sent it through the pile in front. Krejci. Colin Miller hard around and rides the dasher for a while. Jake Gardner has William Nylander on the left wing boards. Austin Matthews out near the center circle. Garrett's pass does not connect. Miller to Achari on the pivot. Three on four up ice as the Leafs get numbers back. Moore tries a backhand, but he can't get it through Zaitsev's stick. On the next Charlie Moore Outdoors, Charlie takes his wife Angela to South Beach and promises there will be no fishing. Will the mad fisherman keep his word? Find out tomorrow at noon on Charlie Moore Outdoors. Riley Nash to take the draw on the right side of the zone. Dominic Moore along the boards. Nolan Chari at the hash marks on the inside. Brandon Carlo middle of the line and Chara at the right point. Austin Matthews over the dot. Nash wins it cleanly. Chara to Carlo drives it into Zaitsev's skates. Chara tries to pry the puck past Zach Hyman. Man, if you mentioned Hyman's name a lot tonight. Carlo slides it out to Chara. Chara to Nash at the red line. Can't get through Hunwick's poke check. And Moore has it. Hunwick with the tap back played with a high stick. And then Toronto had the next touch. Hunwick in his 11th NHL season. Seventh round pick of the Boston Bruins in 2004. Played for a while in Colorado and then the Rangers. Kirk fires the puck and rattles out of the corner. Crew chips it high for Hayes. Hayes. Holding off Gardner, turns to the forehand, saved by Anderson. Brown gets decked on Zarnik's hit. Bolesky battling Holland. Brown comes through. Krug back at his own goal. Bob O'Gara, now Tory Krug. Krug tries the elevated pass. Holland got a piece of it. Zarnik slides it in on Anderson. Wants to play it quickly. Zarnik got a piece of the puck. Get over, get over! McCulloch to Kovarov, racing up Colin Miller's wing. Hits the brakes. Now Bolesky's the next man. Miller gets caved in on McCulloch's hit. Kadri with the puck, a hand pass against Toronto. 13-17 to go in the game. The Leafs comfortably ahead. Dale, thank you. Bruins got to get it moving very quickly. This is a hockey night in Canada game. And uh, I'm just going to guess that there's some kind of a network delay north of the 49th parallel. Back is Garrett to Krug. 
And Marchand was in space, but the pass didn't connect. Well, we talked about the Bros not winning enough draws. They had a chance off a face-off earlier in this period in the offensive zone, the one time by Carlo. And then this set play that we've seen the Bruins use a lot when they win a draw, particularly in the neutral zone, D to D and that left winger, in this case Marchand, does that curl up the wall as if he's going to take a pass in direct, and then he cuts back to the middle, and that pass from Crew just hopped over the stick of Marchand, otherwise he's in alone. Backus wins the drop against Cadbury. Pasternak aggressively into the circle to keep possession for Boston. Marchand tries to wiggle through McCulloch, who gets a piece of the puck. Riley off Backus's stick, and it slides across ice. Backus, oh, he wanted to line up Cadbury, but Cadbury got rid of the puck. Now a race for the puck, McCulloch against Krug. Krug goes down, stays with him, makes the play from his belly. Twice. Riley. Backhands the puck down the wall. O'Gara holds off Komarov. He tries to one-hand it around him. Back is battling against Cadbury, and he wins that battle as well. Hunwick, the backhand to the end wall. Over back is the stick. Group tries it to Backus, but here's Cadbury. Back to Zaitsev. Back pedals his shot off. Pasternak's blade and up out of play with 12-21 remaining in the game. David Pasternak from Boston's only goal tonight. Not only the only goal, he had the best chance. I mean, that was an empty net one time or for a guy that can score, but that chance he had the second period. Point blank. Brandon Carlo flips past Chara. Chara elevates it and the puck will skitter all the way down for ice. Now let me preface this next thing by saying this is not the difference in the game, but uh, we've seen a lot better ice at Air Canada Center than we've seen tonight. They did have an hour-long pre-game ceremony, including a marching bagpipe band on the ice <laughs> wearing creepers. So, you know, who knows? I don't know if the, uh, the ice isn't that great tonight or if it's just coincidence, but it seems that the puck's been, uh, been hopping. Yeah, and I'll tell you what the difference in the hockey game is. The Bruins' battle factor at key times yep. on big plays, number one. Their positioning on some of the goals that they've given up, their decision-making, even when they've had people, uh, you know, in the right area, the execution and the finish defensively, just not good enough against a team that uh, brought a lot of emotion in that first period. Yeah. It's going to be another icing against the Bruins. Yeah, Toronto has not only sped to the puck and, and won a lot of foot races, but they have administered body blows when they are in those mano a mano battles. And that's probably why they've come away with most of those loose pucks. And as Professor Brickley has been heard to say, what's the most important thing? <laughs> that thing that's about to come out of Pierre Rassico's hand. Marinchin blasts away and hits Heinen's shin pad and goes to the corner. Brandon Carlo on the turn into Heinen skates off Marinchin's stick. Krejci off Nylander. Nylander gives it forward. Heinen in a race with Carlo. Carlo goes down. Heinen gives it back to Riley. Riley off of Carlo's stick. It deflects all the way back to the neutral zone. Bruins change out. Morgan Riley. Battles it around the glass. Carlos stumbles, but from his knees makes the play to Riley Nash. Achari kicks to Moore. Moore bounces it to the right wing corner, goes in after it. Gardner gives him a shove off bounce. Moore stays with it. Centers. Lyles holds. Now fires it into the slot. Colin Miller can't keep it on the line. It's a delayed offside, and the faceoff will come back to the neutral zone. Hit the slopes this winter with the Bruins, 98.5 the Sports Hub, and Loon Mountain with the Skate and Ski Ticket Package. When you purchase a $99 ticket to select games now through December, you'll receive a complimentary lift ticket to Loon Mountain, New England's most accessible mountain. To purchase tickets, visit bostonbruins.com slash skate and ski. Now with the faceoff on the left side of the ice. Oh, it's Matt Martin, Noel Achari just hacking away at each other. Gardner 
snaps one all the way to the penalty bench doors. Martin twists it ahead. Peter Holland, the back diagonal. Achari bumps Martin, and the puck gets out to center. Nash retreating, Martin barreling in on him, but Nash holds his position so Lyles can take the puck. Saucer pass, cross ice off Colin Miller's stick. Achari around Gardner, but Carrick is the next layer. Achari going one against two. Nash comes in to throw a bump, and it's going to be Holland. It's going to be Holland. Little stick oh, he wants a piece of Achari, and he looks like he just learned some extra. Well, he, he had the original, too. He put the stick right between the legs of Achari on a slash after that little exchange down in the left corner. The Bruins are looking to activate their D right now. You're at the 10-minute mark or right around it. You're down by three-third period. Take some more chances. But now with the power play, they, oh. need, a, they need another power play goal. Oh. Here's the exchange. Shari and Holland, Holland the stick work. Then he went after him again. Well, he's trying to get a Chari to go with him. Not gonna happen. Bruins one for three on the power play with three shots on goal. You, know, you got a young team in the Maple Leafs. They're feeling good right now with the three goal lead. It's been a big night. But you put a power play goal on the board now, and see how they react. Back is Spooner, Heinen, Krejci, and Krug. Komarov and Hyman. The penalty killing Draw goal. Penalty number Morgan Riley, one of the defensemen, along with Martin Marinci. Marincin backhands it toward Hudobin. Gloves it out of the air, but there's Hyman right there to force another attacking zone faceoff for Toronto on the kill. You got to get sharp here. Yeah? I mean, you got a chance to win that draw. Backus wins it in the direction of Spooner. Spooner spins off this guy, but he can't locate the puck. And then Hudobin just kind of bypasses everybody with a wrap around the board. You've taken 15, 16 seconds off your power play already when you're down by three and you need a power play goal. Bruins need to sharpen up here. Hyman will chase against Marincin. In direction Riley. Komarov back to Marincin. Toronto has had more possession than the Bruins have during this 30 seconds of power play. I mentioned it earlier in the game on the power play. You still got to win battle. Komarov puts the body on crew. Anderson holds. He'll clear it himself. Frederick Anderson has allowed only seven goals against the Bruins, and he is working toward the end of his fifth game against the Bees. Well, one linesman here was one to call this face off deep in the offensive zone. He was pointing to that low circle to the left of Frederick Anderson when Pasternak went to shoot this puck in. He said it was deflected, but after a discussion, they're going to take this puck and drop it outside. Leski wins the draw. Colin Miller to John Michael Lyles. Back to Miller to the attacking line to Pasternak. Has to hesitate. March Andrews ahead of the play, so the Bruins need to tag up. Marshan holds. McCulloch tries to tear it away. Marshan gets the puck back, turns toward the middle of the line, gains the zone. Here's Pasternak, the wrist shot off of Marshan's stick. Actually trying to pass it low to him in the circle. And that puck hits glass and bounces out of play with 34 seconds to go in the Boston power play. Well, this is what I mean by decision-making, Jack. You know, the Bruins go, and they work it up through the neutral zone, and they throw it back to Colin Miller. What they're trying to do is to get the penalty-killing unit stationary so then you can make one quick pass, gain entry. But now you pass the puck to Pasternak, who's posted up and himself at the blue line. They close in on him quickly. He has no options. All he can do is throw it in, and the Leafs have an easy clear. Yeah, you set it on the very first power play of the night for Boston. It looks as if they're passing and then react. Yeah. In all three zones. 
Miller turns his goal. Pasternak taps back. Miller swerves to get away from Komarov's pressure. Gains the line. Boleski to Miller at the blue line. Tosses it down the wall. Boleski holds. Now Pasternak with Marincin giving him a bump. Pasternak cycles it from Marshan. Komarov can't clear past Miller. Cross ice. Lyles has to turn the stick. Boleski. Back to even strength. The rocket goes wide on the stick side. Colin Miller tosses it off the corner boards, bounces in the crease, but Anderson sweeps it out of there. Zero shots on goal during the power play for the Bruins. Rob O'Kara off the corner wall. Nash off a stick. Short hops past Boleski. Connor Brown can't get through the crew tip check. Nash on a little bump in the corner to keep the puck rolling. Krug gets barreled over on Matt Martin's hit. Dominic Moore can't get through Connor Carrick. Carrick on the counter. O'Gara comes over to clean him out and knock him off his skate. O'Gara out of the left to Riley Nash. Tosses the soft backhand to the corner. Gardner with speed, but he gives it away to Nash. Rather, it was uh, more on the steal. Hayes on the sweeping backhand. Chai is squared off with Matt Martin. Yeah, I didn't like the hit on Krug. No, Matt Martin is wailing away, but two ex-Islanders going at it. Chara just plants it. And he's giving him a little what for. Matt Martin is a big guy. Sedano charges ragdoll. Which led up to the Chara Martin exchange. The big hit on Tory Krug, and actually Jimmy Hayes tried to engage Matt Martin. Martin just kind of waved him off a little bit. But when Chara came out, he wasn't going to wave anybody off at that point. Chara wanted a piece, and the gloves finally came off. 59th fighting major of Sedano Chara's 19 year NHL career. His first against Matt Martin. And what easily has to be the longest sleeve length in the NHL paid off there. <laughs> he had the collar hold, then used that forward hand to administer the jab before the classic takedown. Yeah, Chara the extra two, so Schooler in the box. So the Bruins on the penalty kill here. Down three. Seven minutes to go. Carlo hammers one, and Anderson blocks it to the far side. Nikita Zaitsev. Now they go back to pick it up. He fired it past Austin Matthews. Zaitsev. Carrick, Nylander, saved by Hudobin. Nylander along the end boards. Has Kadri posted up in front. Now Kadri goes to the side of the net. Gets the pass from Nylander. Nylander holds, swings it out. Matthews intercepted Heinen. Or rather, Marshan, excuse me. Marshan tries to go underneath. Keeps battling for the puck. Comes out with it. One against four. Five now as the Bruins are changing out. I don't think Lyles and Backus would have left if they realized Marshan stayed with it and somehow still had possession. Mitch Marner, top of the zone. Riley in front for Cadre and Hudobin with the pinball flipper. Gardner winds out of his own zone. Riley skating toward O'Gara. Shari clears, but Marner has possession. Ten seconds to go on the roughing penalty being served by Ryan Spooner. Marner penetrates the zone. Van Riemsdyk on his off wing. One hands it toward the apron of the get goal and gets it back and fires it into the corner. Spooner's out of the box. It's back to even strength. Toronto had two shots on goal during the power play. Danton Heinen against Matt Hunwick. Five minutes to go. The Bruins need one really soon. 
Gardner one hands the puck ahead. Hunter Brown through the corner. Hudolden springs one back off the corner glass. Krejci in a puck battle. Brown gets underneath. Krejci comes away with it. Spurs going middle. Krug can't hit him as Hunwood goes to a knee to block the pass. Sights it. Around the left wing for Krejci off Brown's legs. Colin Miller holds the wrist shot, whistles wide of the stick side post. Zaitsev chops it out. Krug to Miller, the Bruins in the middle of the change. Miller finds Postnock in open ice. Postnock's shot, blocker safe. Postnock gets it right back off the goalie. I think it looked as if it hit the crossbar, but no washout sign, so it might have been an optical illusion. Yeah, well, it certainly went through the crease, around the crossbar, and behind it. Did you see a washout sign? No. Correct. I didn't hear. Zach Hyman has had a terrific game for Toronto. Komarov gets it out of his skates. Riley cross ice. Marich and fakes the shot, takes the shot off a deflection. Hudobin makes a potential save. The wraparound. Hyman gets it back in front. Hyman now on a tip of Riley's drive. So much energy in the Leafs' legs and not so much for the Bruins. Cadre wins a puck battle against Krug right in front, looking for McCulloch, who's already got one tonight. Colin Miller angles his body to beat McCulloch in that puck battle. And the Bruins clear they need a change. Three and a half to go, and the crowd pretty happy in Toronto as they begin their 100th anniversary season celebration. Goalies go, the chant from the crowd. Dominic Moore over the line, Riley Nash can't catch it on his forehand. Nash comes up with the puck, turns and fires well wide off the corner boards and all the way back to center. O'Carry into the center circle to Riley Nash. Nash rides it around the dash where it hops over Anderson. Stick Carrick takes the bump from Achari. Gardner right up the middle of his own zone. Connor Brown pokes it. To Brandon Carlo, who bounces it down to the right wing corner, and that's going to be icing against Boston. Monday night at 7, join Dale, Gord, and Barry for Bruins Face Off Live, presented by Echo Store Technologies. They'll have Jack's one on one interview with Patrice Bergeron and Sarah Davis's trip to the Hockey Hall of Fame with Riley Nash. Check in with us and be ahead of the game Monday night at 7. Blake Wheeler's the captain now in Winnipeg. And they're liking what they're getting out of him. They're in Minnesota tonight, aren't they? The Jets? I'll take your word for it. <laughs> Sites have fires it off of Dominic Moore's leg. So that's an easy flight for them. Just point the plane due north. <laughs> Get there in about, what, an hour? Bolesky at the red line. Whips the backhand. Zarna takes it on a bounce. Spins off the Marner check. Finds Carlo. His drive off Marner's stick. O'Gara tries to fire it middle. Zaitsev takes the puck. Marner scoops it up. O'Gara gloves it down. Less than two minutes to go in the game. Zaitsev all the way around. Austin Matthews in the deepest slump of his career. He's gone nearly four periods without a goal. Matthews out of the corner. The number one overall choice of last June's entry draft. Gardner gets to Kara. He blasts it into O'Gara's pads. O'Gara looks long right side for Hayes, who only can wave at the puck. Anderson gets it past Hayes, past Matthews, and it's icing with 128 left. Support local cancer patients and survivors by joining the Bruins when they take on the Wild on Tuesday, October 25th at 7 o'clock for a Hockey Fights Camp tonight presented by Leahy Health. To learn more about the evening, visit bostonbruins.com slash Hockey Fights Cancer. Krejci, Heinen, and Spooner. The forwards for Claude Julian. Krejci wins the draw against Matthews. Food shot off a of body, hits end glass. Nylander under pressure as Heinen confronts him. Hyman can't get the puck out of the zone and it bounces through. Brick, I read about a phenomenon 
regarding deep space travel and the danger of astronauts developing space brain, which would be serious cognitive loss. Seems the Bruins might have a little of that tonight. Can you put a ball on this one as we enter the final minute? Uh, not too many silver linings in this one. When the game was 3-1 after Toronto took advantage of some bad mistakes by Boston, some mismanagement of the puck. And we've been over it a number of times already, the position, the decision-making. But there was a sequence where the Bruins had a chance to get back in the hockey game. We talked about it. it was a great performance in game one by the back this line. But you're looking for a little bit more offensive balance, and you're just not really getting a sustained offensive attack from any line other than that threesome. Toronto won the bulk of the puck battles with its speed and tenacity and used the body better. The Bruins just over there was no magical finish tonight. The Leafs in control throughout. And they finish off a 4-1 victory at Air Canada Center. Save of the game brought to you by Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Oh, nice pitch down the wall by Jarrett to keep the play alive. Good body position by Marshall delivers a perfect one-timer feed to a very good goal scorer, certainly one that's learning to be a very good goal scorer at this level. David Poston now who just rips it, but Freddie Anderson, his best save of the evening. 24 stops for Anderson, and he increases his record to 5-0-0 with a sub one and a half goals against average lifetime against the Bruins. We'll see you Monday night from Winnipeg after the break. Dale picks it up on the other side.